Well, my video this week is not going to be real long, a real complex one. I'm going to introduce my intent to uh, make a series of bowl making videos. I've made two or three bowls already uh, that I've made videos on, uh, at least two. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and check. But uh, this was the first one I made. I made two of these. This one came out of the scroll saw uh, magazine, scroll saw that the. the uh, the one that I subscribe to, uh, it's, it, I didn't know it was a, an advanced. It, it's it got curved sides. That's considered an advanced project, but I made it work. <clears throat> but the guy that put this pattern in has a website called scrollsawmania.com, and you can go there and make patterns, and that's what I did here. I made these patterns, and I made these bowls, this oval bowl. I'll have links to those patterns. That's the kind of pattern you get when you go to his website. That's the same pattern that made this bowl right here. <clears throat> but I got, I bought this book. I've had my eye on this book for a while. This is Scroll Saw Wooden Bowls by Carol Rothman. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to dive into it. I'm not, it's got 30 projects in it. I don't think I'm going to do all 30. But in this video, I want to cover the basics of what we need. Uh, and the basic procedures in making a bowl. So I'm calling this bowl basics. Uh, scroll, these scroll bowls are made from concentric wing, rings cut at an angle, stacked and glued, and then shaped, sanded to a desired shape. And uh, there's all kinds of woods you can use. These are made out of poplar, but she recommends aspen, poplar, cedar, mahogany, maple, cherry, walnut, and oak. Of course, the others you can use. You can mix colors. And the thing is, you, you want to use wood similar in hardness when you stack them together. So when you sand, they won't they'll sand evenly. Plus, you get a strongly colored wood and you put it next to porous wood. When you sand it, it'll move the color from the, the hard wood into the porous wood. And the bowls can be all shapes. You can see this one is a is a triangle. This is measures the same anywhere you measure it around. That was the uniqueness of that bowl. And this one's round and this one's oval. They can even be rectangular uh, or different shapes. And they can have scalloped tops. As you can see, she mixes a lot of materials to get unique designs and patterns. And I'm kind of interested in trying to do that. Uh, These are the basic ones, like I say. You use a pattern like this. That's kind of a, a basic beginner's. Now, cutting these, and I, I used to, he had a pattern for that one that I used. A similar pattern, but you change the angle on different blades, uh, on different levels. Uh, not different blades, you use the same blade, but on each, each layer, you, you might cut a little bit different angle. So uh, it's all trigonometry. That's how you figure those angles. I took trigonometry in high school, but that was more than a little while ago, so I don't remember much about it. So she has a chart in this book, which will give you the angles you need. And then scrollsawmania.com, which she also recommends, you can go. It has a calculator that'll calculate the angles for you, and then even draw the pattern if you if you want it to. If not, you can just get the angle from there, and then use it draw it yourself or whatever because on a on a more complex bowl you just have a pattern for the first ring and then you use that ring to mark the second pattern the second one to mark the third and so on so uh, and then you need to mark the rings as you go we'll, we'll go through all that in the first project so you can keep them lined up especially if you've got patterns in there you want to uh, you want to carry through you need to mark those rings so you get them lined up properly uh, she recommends uh, she, a, a flying Dutchman blade in number nine, actually. Uh, I use Pegas, but for Pegas, she recommends uh, the modified geometry or super skip in, in number seven, and possibly even in number five. I switched from flying Dutchman to Pegas about a year ago, but uh, and I'm really happy with that. So I'm, I'm set up with that kind of blade. Now she also recommends that you drill the holes in a pattern like this. You're in alternating. As you see, I got more marked here, 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 and here. You alternate from side to side. 
and she also recommends to make uh, a, a guide. Like I've got one here. This is at 28 degrees. Her first bowl in the book is 28 degrees. That's made out of a piece of hardwood. In fact, that's walnut. She says hardwood, two and a half by three inches. Well, that's about what that is, but it's got a 30, a 28 degree angle. Use that as a guide to drill the holes so you can drill the holes at the same angle you're going to cut with. So, and then you got to sand the gap, sand the rings between each layer, make sure that they fit smoothly together, and you glue you glue the rings all together at once and leave the bottom off. Glue the rings all together at once, and she has a, the uh, pattern for a bowl press, which I'm going to make. I haven't gone into town to get the materials for that yet. I need some carriage bolts. But I'm going to make the bowl press. I might do a little video on that. I'm going to go in tomorrow, I believe, to get those parts. Uh, and then you got to sand them. Uh, it's not too big a deal on these straight-sided bowls. I used, uh, I had a little set of uh, uh, sanding drums that fit on my drill. And they're about that this long sanding drums. They would fit all the way through there. And I would glue those together and drill internally and externally. And also use the uh, belt sander on the external parts. But you get to curving the sides, which what this one was, and I didn't know any better when I made that one. It's a little harder to sand properly. She recommends a sander for the inside, which is an inflatable a ball sander. Now, I've got one order to be here next week. But also, uh, she, she recommends these flexible pad sanders. And that's what I've got right here, a little pad. i got two pads that came with it. And you got you got the sandpaper disc that stick to the Velcro. I got about six or seven different grips there, and I ordered all this, just got it in yesterday. And I'm going to use that for the, I don't need it on the first bowl necessarily, but I'm going to use it. And she recommends sticking it in your drill, Paris, and, and sanding away to shape your stuff. So, you could also use an angle grinder or anything that would fit on a drill, whatever, but I'm going to use the drill press probably. Uh... So that'd be a first for me. I have, that's kind of a neat little thing. Also, my wife works on gourds, and that'll be good to sand the external part of a gourd, I do believe. But uh, that's, that's something she's had a problem with, so we may have solved that problem with this. Anyway, that's going to be the gist of this. You can also hand sand and use a mop sander or sanding mop. Uh, but a lot of these I did with, the, with those little uh, sanding drums on my drill and by hand, and by the uh, belt sander. So, I may put another video out. I'll make the bowl press. I may show that, and then I'll do the first project in her book there. It'll be something like this when I get done with it, but I'm going to do it in her methods and marking the bowls so I can get that procedure down so when you get into a more complex bowl, you can line everything up. I'm going to put a link to this uh, flexible sander and also well, the other sander I got coming and that book in the description if you want to check that out. So stay tuned and maybe in a few days I'll have the uh, the bowl press video up and then uh, then we'll make a bowl. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned and uh, see if we can get something kind of nice looking here. So thanks for watching.